The remainder of uh, this afternoon's proceedings will, will go as follows. Uh, first, uh, Scott Hansen, uh, the Honorary Consul of Thailand here in Utah, will introduce uh, His Excellency the Ambassador. Uh, after which, uh, there has been a prepared video presentation, uh, which we'll all uh, observe, and then the Ambassador will address us, and then if we have a little time after that, we'll have some question and answer. So. Thank you. It's uh, good to be here with you. His, Excel His Excellency Chayong uh, Satipanan is the current U.S. Ambassador to the United States from the Royal Kingdom of Thailand. He took over this responsibility in May of 2012, uh, and this is the uh, current step in a long history and long uh, career of uh, government and country service. He has previously served Thailand as the ambassador to South Korea. Uh, prior to that, ambassador to Switzerland with concurrent accreditation to Liechtenstein and the Holy See. He served as a permanent representative to the United Nations and other international organizations in Geneva, and also as ambassador to Indonesia with concurrent uh, accreditation to uh, Papua New, New Guinea. He also served as the Consul General to the Royal Thai Consulate General in uh, Sydney, Australia, and has had other various positions in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, for the uh, country of Thailand, which he joined in 1975. He has had numerous responsibilities. He has been given numerous awards by the uh, Thai government and has significant international experience in both government affairs and in uh, understanding relationships between countries and cultures and individuals. Uh, the ambassador holds a bachelor's degree uh, with honors and a master's degree from Chulalongkorn University in Bangkok, Thailand, as well as a master's of law degree and a doctorate in law and dis diplomacy from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce him and to recommend him as a man who has a great insight and a very great spirit and understanding of the human uh, uh, people. And uh, it's been a pleasure for me to uh, accompany him in his tour here to Utah. Thank you very much, the Honorable Consul General. And before um, my uh, presentation, I'd like to uh, invite you to uh, watch uh, a few minutes uh, story of our culture and history of Thailand. Uh, I think the uh, technicians are working on the DVD to come out now. Please. Later on, Western civilizations have been absorbed, blended, and adapted into a rich cultural heritage that has a character completely of its own. Such cultural mixes are reflected in the kingdom's tradition, arts, and architecture. Thai culture, which stresses compassion, tolerance, and open-mindedness, has allowed Thai people to consolidate their strengths and made them receptive to new ideas and ready to welcome the changes and challenges of today's world. This openness has enriched Thai society and also added to its charm. While over 90% of Thais are Buddhists, people from diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds have lived here in harmony, free to practice their faiths and beliefs while respecting others. Thailand's social vibrancy is the growing community of expatriates coming to live, work, or spend their holidays. Communities of various nationalities can be found in different parts of the kingdom, with some settling down several centuries ago. Thailand's rich cultural heritage and diverse environment has endowed its people with expertise and creativity in arts, handicrafts, and design that is both inspirational and unique.
graceful styles that beautify the Siamese courts and temples and give their special character to the Thai performing arts have ensured the international recognition received by the Thai people for their ability to revitalize traditional arts and to adapt local folk knowledge and culture to blend with modern lifestyles. Meticulous traditional skills have been given new roles to fulfill new requirements. Thailand's traditional culinary art with its unique spices is fast becoming a world favorite. A long heritage of accumulated agricultural and folk knowledge has provided Thai industries today with rich material to inspire a whole range of products to offer the world. Designers are energizing Thai products with new, exciting, creative ideas in fields that range from animation to games to fashion, to furniture and decor. The classical Thai arts themselves have also evolved into bold new forms, from modern paintings exhibited in galleries throughout the world, to a uniquely Thai approach to the art of cinema. essential component of the kingdom's vitality has been the warm friendliness of the Thai people. The unique Thai smile and the wide greeting are symbols of the sincere hospitality that impresses visitors from every part of the world. Combined with its beautiful natural environment and rich culture, this traditional graciousness has made Thailand one of the world's leading tourist destinations with around 15 million foreign visitors arriving each year. Named as the best city overall in the world by Travel and Leisure magazine, Bangkok is one of the most vibrant and exciting capitals in the world. A metropolis where ultra-modern shopping malls coexist with traditional architecture. Beyond, from the mountainous north to the white sandy beaches of the south, each region of Thailand has its own character, with distinctive local heritages, customs, arts, dances, folklore, festivities, and of course, food. Thai sense of hospitality and their warm heartedness, I think, is unsurpassed anywhere in the world, in fact. And I think this is one of the key factors for attracting people to Thailand. While bringing a special style of traditionally inspired creativity to our fast changing world, Thailand has fully retained its hospitality, grace, and friendliness. It is therefore not surprising that so many visitors keep returning to Thailand. Yes, uh, this is a sample of our culture that uh, we presented to you every year, and there's DVD like this uh, produced in Thailand and uh, presented worldwide. And this is about last year, so the tourist last year is about 15 million. Uh, up to 18 million tourists came to Thailand in 2012. So, uh, Dr. Peterson and distinguished guests and young students and colleagues here. Um, may I start by beginning about Thailand in perspective. Uh, this is about, and then we go to our Thai-US relations. You can see from the PowerPoint that Thailand is located in the heart of mainland Southeast Asia. Right now, there are 10 countries in South Asia, but uh, for, for six of them are in mainland South Asia, and the rest in 
Maritam, South Asia. And Timor-Leste is considered to be coming soon to be part of ASEAN and South Asia, but they're still waiting for the process. And Thailand alone is of the area is about 20,000 square miles, which is about the size of the state of Texas, and with a population of 65 million now. And I would say it's up, going up to 66 or 67 soon. Thailand is known as a rice bowl of Asia. So in terms of our economy, you can see that the mainly uh, we are agricultural uh, sector play a very important role and contribute to 9% of our GDP. And the manufacturing is about 38% of GDP, thanks to a lot of investment from uh, Western countries that have changed our, our structural economy into more uh, export-oriented countries. And we have 25% of the uh, uh, service sector of GDP. So this, uh, and 7% that uh, the income comes from the uh, tourist, tourism that we have every year. We go very quickly so that uh, you can see some of the background and then you can raise the questions to ask. These are the top five trade partners. U.S. is the third one. The U.S., uh, the figure of trade uh, between Thailand and the U.S. is very interesting. Uh, it's coming up, and we can see that the... Uh, Figures is about 7.5%, and Japan still be the leading country after the Second World War, and China is coming up. And next it will be um, our foreign direct investment. We can see in the next PowerPoint the following. This is the samples of the export that we send out, machinery, rubber, prepare, meat, trim, tuna, jewelry. We still be the, the world's uh, <coughs> biggest trim export. Well, the trim in Thailand is made from the farm. It's a farm trim, not natural trim. And chemicals go and that we import for, any, for all industrials. So the FDI in Thailand now, uh, the F Thailand quality investment is a little bit uh, high every year. So last year is more than uh, 70 billion US dollars. And every year our growth rate is about five to six percent. So that's quite good for, for country uh, in this area, uh, except China, which always enjoy double digits, of, but uh, Thailand is a moderate growth rate. And the unemployment rate below 0.9%. This is very much different from uh, Western standard because our system is quite uh, interesting that uh, we, the type people enjoy freedom. And then, uh, you know, uh, people are working in like a primary society. So family members help each other. That's why uh, they can do in uh, all the business, the family help and make them have uh, work and job to do. The World Bank has upgraded Thailand's income categories from a lower middle income economy to an upper middle income economy. And now we are looking to be the emerging uh, advanced economy soon, but they're still on the way. And the current Thai government uh, emphasized on the policy of medical hub of Asia. We have very good uh, medical, uh, hospitals, dentists, all this. And the price is almost 110 of the price here in USA. And with a very uh, modernized and advanced uh, technology. And we are building vehicles, export to many countries. GM, Ford, all coming to Thailand. A lot of Japanese car also in Thailand our German car, and we re-export. Ford company is doing very well to export car from Thailand, made in Thailand, 
and sent to Australia and many countries in the world. We are the kitchen of the world. We supply food, export food to the world. And green growth, that's the main policy of Thai government. And you can see that uh, sustainable development is being very much emphasized in almost every sector that uh, Thailand is doing. And in terms of our foreign policy, the government very much uh, try to enhance relations with our neighboring countries. That's a top, top priority. And second is to promote ASEAN community, which uh, ASEAN community will be established uh, at the end of 2015. So every country is working hard to bring all together. Right now, most of us trading each other with a zero percent tax. So that means quite free trade area among 10 ASEAN countries. And Thailand want to become an active and respond player at the international level. So this is very important. So almost every uh, city and every uh, school and ministries very much emphasize on how are we going to be very active member of ASEAN Economic Community in the year 2015. The three pillars of uh, ASEAN Economic Community is political security pillar, economic pillar, and social cultural pillar. And then Thailand uh, is in between to help solving the issue of South China Sea. We don't have any problem on that. We are not one of the governments but we are working hard to find a way that every country should work together with, by uh, political means to settle the problem. So Thailand is undertaking a call, quiet diplomacy to implement and the, on the declaration of court of conduct of parties of the South China Sea, which we call DOC, and get discussion on the court of conduct back on track by building trust and confidence and keep an open mind so every party concerned should come and sit down and, and, and discuss. On Myanmar, the opening up of Myanmar, including improved ties between the US and Myanmar, has also opened up new opportunities for many countries, including the, uh, the US business people. Thailand sees positive development of Myanmar as an important part of ASEAN prosperity. For this reason, Thailand supports democracy and political reform in Myanmar. So these are the trends going on. Now it seems like uh, every road is heading to Myanmar. But we still have to uh, help supporting Myanmar for their democratization and then for their integration as one nation, since Myanmar has more than 100 minorities with different languages. On Thailand and the United States, we can see that uh, we are all-time ally of the US, and our relations remain close and cordial. Our relationship went back as far as 1821, when the first American trading vessel was set to first reach Bangkok. Twelve years later, Thai-U.S. official diplomatic relations has been established by the signing of the Treaty of Agreement, uh, Amity Treaty and Commerce in 1833. This is uh, very important. This year will commemorate 180 years of our relationship between Thai and U.S. And a very interesting story that has been written in several books. Uh, you may know that uh, in the early years, this was exemplified by exchange of gifts and message at the highest level. And several uh, loyal gifts have been presented to uh, presidents here in the U.S. And and now it's been kept at the Smithsonian uh, Museum in Washington, D.C. In particular, in 1861, King Mongkut, or King Lama IV, wrote one his, of his best-known message to President James Buchanan at the time 
offering to send elephants to America. The offer was subsequently declined politely by President Abraham Lincoln in 1862. But from the language in the letter, we received from the... Uh, what's going on? Anyway, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, when we're talking about the issue nowadays on wildlife protection, in the letter of King Mongkut to President Buchanan, they talk about how to keep elephant alive in the U.S. when it goes out, from, it went out from Thailand, uh, Siam at that time. So this is a very interesting story. It was written, and anybody interested in can go to the uh, National Archives here in Washington D.C. You can see that that in the letter handwritten by uh, King Mongkut at that time, it was already mentioned how you can save elephants and, you know, to, which come from tropical area to be in Western countries. They started to talk about that already. Now, uh, elephants is a big issue because many of them get killed to get the ivory. So there's a lot of uh, NGO communities work out to save life of uh, elephants. We still have some, but not many as before. So this is one of the big projects in uh, many uh, countries, especially in Thailand. So, so many of the gifts now, as I mentioned, are uh, kept at the uh, Smithsonian, and we're still trying once in a while, asking them to display for public. And we only have the books and the photos they took, but the reality, the real one, once in a while they will allow us to have a look. But uh, for public eyes, it's very important to bring them up from the, uh, you know, the, the deposit inside Smithsonian to see how uh, close we are and the uh, culture and, and the skills of uh, craftsmen that we have in Thailand in those years. It's, uh, in the early 19th century. Last year, we have uh, several uh, bilateral visits. President Obama went to Bangkok on the 18th and 19th November. And a lot of projects have been mentioned, both food security, energy security, and effort to uh, eradicate uh, human trafficking, all this. We do have a lot of Migration, just like uh, you know, the migration coming from uh, South America to the U.S. And for us, they are from Myanmar, uh, looking for a better life, for the dream. So we would estimate them about nearly two million people. Everywhere you go in business, you can see, you can hear someone speak in Burmese language. So now. Thailand is also short of labor force. But the Thais went overseas to work in foreign countries. And then our neighboring uh, friends come in to work in Thailand. So this is a kind of circle kind of thing. And we have over 60,000 Thais work in Korea. 80,000 work in Taiwan. And about 20,000 work in Israel. So all, many Thais are working uh, you know, in the labor force area in many countries. Again, we, we short off labor in Thailand. Then we have Cambodian, Myanmar, or even Laos. People came in. The Thai government set up a policy, what we call temporary legal work permit uh, every year in order to uh, legitimize them, legalize those people who migrated so that we do know their whereabouts and provide them for public health, etc. But not many of them came in to register. They just ignore that. We try to advertise, make a lot of public relations for them to come to register. This is to be a problem. 
maybe less than 500,000 people register. But probably they're not they're still afraid or something you know, along that line. I think it's going to be similar to what uh, happened here in the U.S. So these are the main problem, but we working out on a humanitarian basis to look after them, you know, provide the children with education, and then basic uh, medical treatment that we provided to all these uh, migrant workers. A apart from that, along the borders, we have many uh, displaced persons who escape from the fightings along the, with, between the minorities and with the, uh, the government. So things still going on, and we hope that peace negotiation would be successful so that uh, the country could be uh, you know, back to a uh, stage of developing themselves without worrying about any fightings. So this year, we will commemorate a 180th anniversary of Thai-U.S. diplomatic relations. We have come a long way from treaty allies to what now called strategic partnership. The word we are using now is strategic partnership, where both sides have cooperated in all areas and all levels. Our bilateral trade has also continued to expand as I mentioned, the U.S. is the third largest trade partner, while Thailand is the 22nd trade partner of the U.S. And the U.S. is one of the biggest investors in Thailand, bringing more than 466 million U.S. dollars in net for direct investment uh, two years ago. Now we can... See, uh, last year alone, we have about 600,000 American tourists visit Thailand. So that makes us to be one of the uh, world's best destinations. Apart from European uh, tourists, we have uh, quite a number from the U.S. And, of course, now Chinese tourists are coming up because when they have money, they, they travel, and then you can see on the um, duty-free area, there's a lot of Chinese tourists doing a lot of shopping there. Last but not least, let me touch a little bit on Thailand and the world. As of uh, to the end of last year, 2012, Thailand enjoys diplomatic relations with over 190 countries and maintain more than 90 embassies, consulates, general and diplomatic missions abroad. We have uh, involved with our UN activities to help several uh, peacekeeping force, including Timor-Leste, Burundi, and Darfur, which are the international anti party piracy efforts in the Gulf of Aden. And then we work to foster our achievement on the UN Millennium Development Goals, or MDG, as well as uh, tackle with all the problem, development problems and challenge on food security, climate change, environment degradation, infectious disease, to health concerns. So these are all the activities, and we are a member and party to almost every uh, UN Human Rights uh, Covenant. And on top of that, we are working through to be a, once again, non-permanent seat on the UN Security Council for the term 2017. It's a long year plan, and we've been uh, non Permanent member of the Nations Security Council uh, one time, a long time ago. So after this, we can see that uh, we are playing our role as a balancer at the same time with the active role internationally. So you can see that uh, a lot of embassies around the world now are given a lot, certain amount of budget to promote both 
uh, direct uh, negotiation on diplomacy, and also on the soft power, which include uh, cultural performance, Thai village, or Thai food festival, or Thai restaurant weeks, film festivals. So these are the things that uh, the Thai embassy in Washington DC and other embassies around the world are promoting. And it works quite well. As a result, you can see uh, Thai restaurant all over the world. We have uh, what we call Thai Selic to give the award for the best and hygiene and good quality of Thai food. So this award will be given uh, as certificate to guarantee that this is, this is very good restaurant. Uh, so these are all activities that the Thai government, Thai embassy are working through to make uh, Thai food be well known and provided by all ingredients from Thailand, including uh, food supply, even seafood from Thailand. So just these are the things that pushing up and then uh, about 9% of our GDP, 7% with tourism, and the rest now are manufacturing products, which uh, you can see many of uh, brand name, uh, bags, shoes, uh, you know, like Nike or uh, flip flop. All these are made in Thailand, but they're not been allowed to sell in Thailand. I mean, you, we have to go. So Thais are coming here to the US to buy at the probably like a. The outlet store <laughs> for buying like coach bags or uh, slippers, uh, flip flop, and all this brand. You know. and, and the Thai, when they come here, they are the big buyers because they will not buy only for themselves. Most of the time, they have to buy and bring gifts to friends. So, this is very really common in Thai culture that when you go overseas, you come back and then you have something as a gift back to your friends and your relatives. Let me uh, conclude by saying that uh, Thailand is a friendly country to every people. And we've been keeping our uh, relationship with so many countries in the world uh, without any uh, problems. And Thailand has never been colonized. Uh, our great leader, the king, uh, have helped us to survive in all the period of uh, years of uh, uh, modernization up to now. So the principle, three principles that Thai people always uh, uphold is nation, religion, and king. So this is the three major institutions that Thai people always uh, respect and, and, and uphold up to now. Thank you very much. few minutes for questions. So we ask that you uh, wait for the microphone for the benefit of our listening audience. And also, if you're a student, please uh, identify yourself and uh, tell His Excellency what you're studying. So questions? Yes, please. Hi, I'm Jared Spencer. I'm studying accounting. I was wondering what has been the, the major issue that you've had to deal with in working with uh, international uh, countries, particularly in the West, what what have what what has you what have you seen as the as the main thing that you've had to deal with in discussing Thailand's role with the world? Oh, the most important one is to uh, impress this country, I mean Western country, uh, to understand that Thailand now is back to democracy. That's most important. We have the government from the general election, and uh, the government is, is in process of bringing back uh, everything according to the uh, constitutions and uh, strategy and planning the Thai government is doing. Right now, the main thing is narrowing gap between the rich and the poor. You will be able to see more Thais from the countryside to study in the U.S. and many advanced countries, which is not easy to find. The first batch of Thais from the village is coming, has already been here, 54 of them. Study English first, and then 
uh, three, four more years in uh, their subjects they choose. So that's the first challenge that we have to convince and impress that we are doing well in our democratic movement. Second is solving the problem that has been standardized by, I would say, uh, in the case of uh, USA, is by the US government. We have the issue like TIP report, which is uh, the objective is to eradicate human trafficking. We have the problem of a racket of people bringing uh, migrants from outside to work in Thailand. And this is part of the human trafficking. I think it's the same as in the US. Over lunch, we talked whether the US have also been called as one of, the, have to make the report on the, they call TIP, TIP report. Yeah. This is the report to make sure that your country has no human trafficking, which is the new form of uh, uh, neo-slavery. So this, this is a very important thing that we ha have to work in between our government convey all this message to the U.S. government, to the State Department. And uh, the third one is more on strengthening economic cooperation. Uh, business has never been stopped. Innovation is going on and on. So we have to get this cooperated, either in terms of uh, innovation, size and technology transfer, or uh, investment in high technology. Next week, I will be together with a group of U.S. business ASEAN uh, group, about 70 companies going to Thailand for a few days during Songkran Festival. Songkran is an ancient New Year's Day for Thailand, Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia. So we have to expand our trade and investment, particularly with the U.S., which is uh, the leading or the leader of world technology. Yep. This is uh, all the challenge, two or three issues. Yes, please. My name is Taylor Elwood. Um, I'm studying international relations here. Uh, so having worked um, in Europe and in the US, what are the differences that you've seen in like your job and interacting with European governments uh, compared to the, the United States? Oh, <laughs> that's a very broad question. <laughs> yeah, the complaints, the same. When it was in Switzerland, uh, euro dollars is a big issue. The Swiss government decided not to join the eurozone. This is, and then when they went to Italy, or a few other countries, or Italy, Italy, or not the main uh, countries of eurozone like uh, France or, or Germany, people kept complaining about the, the rise of inflation as a result of joining the uh, Eurozone. The currency exchange been very much different from what they used to have. Imagine one fr French franc turned out to be one Euro. So that means the price of goods or commodities are up very high. And you can see that uh, many countries are in trouble because when you use the single currency like that, the condition of the country is not ready but for the spirit of cooperation, that's very important. The leaders always have political will to work together. That emphasized uh, the priority they put. So that's my impression in Europe when I was in Switzerland and sometime in Rome. But here, I was here in 1979 to 1982, and again in 1987 as a student. What I saw is that the cost of living here remained very close to the level I used to be. There's not much different. Only technology has been very much improved. A lot of innovations coming up. So we can see that uh, in Europe, there are many uh, U.S. goods export there. But at the same time, U.S. Uh, is a big market for European countries especially 
watch from Swiss. Yeah, they, they saw he here as a big market when they talked to one, you know, some of the uh, owners who export watch. U.S. is a big market for, for them. So you can see that uh, technology that used to be in Europe, because watch mainly from Poland or originally and then Germany or Swiss, um, now the kind of transfer technology of U.S. We start, U.S. start to have very good watch now. So these are the things that we can see that uh, uh, working. In terms of economy, uh, now everything is very expensive in Europe. But for the US, when they come here, they feel that it's very uh, economy, quite cheap. So these are the two different kind of thing. And politically, all united, working as the alliance still on. So there's not much different in terms of uh, ideology. And many Eastern countries in Europe, they try to join hands to work under the, uh, the community as one, like, like a community. But uh, still, you know, the poor countries in Eastern Europe, they're still very much afraid of joining. I was in Cyprus about five years ago, then one of the uh, conference there. I start to feel that this is very difficult. Inflation rates were high. And where the country is bringing money in, tourism is still very low, export very limited. So this, suddenly you have to adopt euro dollars. And four or five years later, you can see that. But the US, I think uh, you have very strong leaders. That make you know, things moving uh, very uh, we call the uh, very carefully and a kind of thing that used to happen in Asia. The leaders start to cut off their how many percent of their salary going back to charity or to develop. This happened in 1997. We've sacrificed part of our salary after the Asian crisis. And we can feel it here now. Uh, but that's going to, for me, I'm quite optimistic. I think that our going to this trend, and when every Americans are working together, work hard, and then uh, not to be so luxurious, eventually you will overcome all the economic problems. I'm quite convinced on that. Hi, I'm Nate Jarrett, I'm studying finance. Um, you briefly touched on uh, the immigrant people from Burma and other countries. Um, I'm going to spend the summer, four months in the summer, in Chiang Rai um, with the Hill Tribe people. And I was just wondering if you had any advice on things that you think the Hill Tribe people need to focus on in order to improve their quality of life. Yes. A very good friend of mine, a lady, called, probably you met her, Tuan Chai. Um, when we were students, she She's a leader for uh, helping Hill Tribes in the north. So I, vis I visited her uh, uh, and stay at one of the mountains. It's a very undeveloped area and short of education, short of pu public health. She sacrificed herself to work there. You know, and it's been very successful for her to be there. She still be there in Chiang Rai, Mae Chan all those areas. Still, uh, there's a lot of projects to help uh, people in there, but it takes time. The first, about their nationality. They migrated from South China, some from Myanmar. So to prove the nationality is a big problem as well. But we do accept the children who were born in Thailand. Yeah. Normally our nationality law doesn't cover for, uh, for the aliens who are several types, I mean, refugees, this person. But uh, in the case, uh, it's case by case basis for the um, Hill tribe people, the children. They go to school like us, they get uh, free medication like us. So that's in general. But nationality is going to be case by case. And then my friend's working on that. So if you go back again, go and visit her, Kudang. She's dedicated herself 
to, to the mountain people. Any the last one, please, if you ask. A good strategic planning, that's the most important one on, on our economic management. Uh, right now, we are very attractive because the uh, investors from Western countries, they tend to come to Asia. US, uh, if you put money here, you have no almost zero interest. Same in Europe. And Europe is not the place anymore after the several problems in terms of banking. So all the money goes to Asia. And Thailand is one other country that have been uh, the uh, place where a lot of investors put their money in investing. As a result, uh, this is in the economic term, we have all 180 billion reserve because uh, during uh, the Asian crisis 1997, Thailand is in trouble and the reserves very little. That's why the government later on bring up all the reserves and now we have almost one, 200 mil billion. And again, the money coming flowing into Thailand in investment, in the stock market, etc., make it more currency in Thailand. And the currency now is very strong. It used to be like 35, 40 after 1907. Now it's only 29.4. So this is making it difficult for exporters again, you know, how to find the equilibrium. It's very important. So the most important you know, with Thailand is best place for investment. It's peaceful now. We have a government who is very uh, liberal and uh, adopt all the policy according to our Western and civilized nations. We adopt all rules of law, all this. These are the main things that attract uh, people coming in, apart from our own culture, that uh, you know, Thai people are very friendly and very accommodating. You will never say, uh, for common people in general, to say no, I don't want to do that, do this. It's very really rarely to, 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 to hear. They will always try to do the best. And when anything or you make mistake, they will say that never mind. So doing the best and never mind always in the heart of Thai people. <laughs> so that from the people to people also that many people were attracted by the charisma of Thais and the attractiveness of Thai people. We said that repeated visitors coming back to Thailand. When I was in Europe, one day I was in a Thai restaurant talking to uh, some friends. Suddenly there's a Swiss man sitting next to me. And so I, I asked him, oh, what kind of food do you like? And he said, he likes everything about Thailand. He said, he's been in Thailand, and now he has no, well, he didn't go. So when he, he doesn't go to Thailand, he comes to the Thai restaurant in order to remember that he's in Thailand. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you try to fight half in Thailand or join the missionary to Thailand. I met some of them in Thailand. Um, 30, 40 years ago, they all, I think some of them probably still around here. <laughs> they speak very good Thai. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.